Good morning. Pastor Sean here uh, with our return to our morning prayer after a one-day uh, absence <laughs> due to illness. I uh, appreciate you for uh, hanging with me there. But this is uh, our morning prayer for, uh, what is this? This is Thursday, February 9th. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, so we, we missed a day, and I, I initially thought maybe we would double up to get us back on the regular schedule, but then I realized, you know, we're already off on a off the schedule because we're not doing it on on Sundays. So, no biggie. So today is is day thirty three of our journey through the Bible, and um, it is let's see, we have the eighth, ninth, and tenth plagues, and then the institution of the Passover. So we got a lot of stuff going on. Um, the the eighth plague or the eighth and ninth plague. So locusts and then darkness. You know, again, God is hardening hardening Pharaoh's heart, and um, and uh, he still won't let the people go. And I, there was something right at the beginning of chapter ten that I think was important and probably will help you understand a little bit more about the hardening of Pharaoh's heart. Why? Why did he have to go through all this? And the opening of chapter ten goes like this: Then the Lord said to Moses, "Go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants." Okay, that I may show these signs of mine among them. Okay, so he, he does this to show the signs to them. And here's the key. And that you may tell in the hearing of your son and of your grandson how I have dealt harshly with the Egyptians and what signs I have done among them, that you may know that I am the Lord. So the second part of why God is doing this is so that Moses can tell his children and grandchildren, his descendants, about what the Lord has done so that you and they, by extension, would know that he is God. And if you if you look ahead to what's going to happen throughout the the journey through the wilderness, you know how God has has redeemed His people. He has brought them out of slavery. He's He's provided for them. You know He He's delivered them uh, time and time again. And still they go through these periods where where they turn against God, where they doubt, where they want to go back to Egypt. Um, you know you'd think that how how could you do this? Well. We, we do it all the time in our sin, right? Um, we often forget about God in our lives, either in big ways or, or small ways. Either way, to God, they're, they're all big ways, right? But the point is, is that we, we look ahead knowing what we know about what the people of Israel will go through in their journey through the wilderness. Um, they need that reminder. They need a constant reminder that this is God and this is what he does and this is who he is. And so everything that God is going through is, is very purposeful in that regard to leave that impression upon them, to show them who he is, um, to, to make no mistake in their, in their minds that this is the Lord. Of course, even, even with all of that, what's going to happen? They're going to fall away. They're going to deny him, reject him, go turn to other gods. And this will be an ongoing problem for all people throughout all generations, even uh, down to and through us. So um, the, the need for God to establish his name among us, to, to remind us constantly of who he is and how powerful he is and what he can do, um, it is always there because of our sinfulness. So that beginning to verse 10 is really key to, to getting that. Um, then we get into uh, chapter um, 11, and of course that is the, the 10th plague, um, and, uh, that is, um, that is, wait, hold on one second. I'm looking at my, <laughs> looking at my text here. Um, the 10th plague where he will kill the firstborn in, in, in the land, except for the, the Egypt or the Israelites who will, through the institution of the Passover, take the blood and paint it on their doorposts and the Lord will pass over them. So, you know, in, in this, the, the 10th plague and the Passover, I mean, the the Christological implications are just all over the place. Um, you know, the the firstborn being killed is, is certainly you know God um, does not spare His firstborn. You know, He gives His firstborn up um, in order to save us. 
Okay, so there, there's that connection there. There's the blood of the lamb, you know, the unblemished lamb that is a sacrifice, the, the blood that covers us, thus protecting us, is Christ's blood, the, the unblemished lamb of God who is sacrificed for our sins, whose blood covers us, and in that covering, we are spared the wrath of God. So all these connections are just huge. Um, and we see that, that God is not just laying a, a tradition of a memorial meal, but he is laying down a, a foreshadowing of what he will do and how he will ultimately pass over um, his judgment on his people through the perfect um, Passover lamb that is Christ. So there's, um, there, there's a lot of that going on with, um, with pointing to Jesus and, um, and of course the, uh, um, you know, so many, well, with with the Last Supper, you know, communion that we we celebrate, you know, is was instituted as Jesus was celebrating the Passover meal with his disciples. So he is instituting this new meal um, in the commemoration of the very sacrifice and meal that God set apart for his people to redeem them, which is now finding its fulfillment and culmination in Jesus Christ. Um and so, uh, you know, and he lays down regulations about it, you know, who is worthy to take it, which is, you know, where we get this kind of idea of, of, of that is put out by Paul in the New Testament about um, eating it unworthily. So, you know, there, there are certain um, understandings that you go into this meal to receive. So um, a lot of things pointing ahead to Christ um, and all this. But um, most most of what you're, you're going to read in these three chapters today, pretty straightforward, probably something, a lot that you've heard before. Um, these are, these are well, well-worn passages through Sunday school classes and, and whatnot. So, um, very, it should be very familiar. Um, but certainly as you're reading it, as you're listening to it, whichever you choose, um, just turn your brain on to, uh, you know, the, the, the Jesus implications of it all, the ways that it points ahead to Christ. Um, and just how God is purposely doing all these things so that his word will come to his people so that they will remember him, so that he will be proclaimed among them, that they will know that he is God. So why do we why do we keep coming to church every week? Because we need to. <laughs> Not just because like, oh, we're sinners and we need to be forgiven, which is absolutely true, but we need to be reminded. You know, we need to be reminded week after week after week, sometimes day by day by day, that he is God. That God loves us, has sent his son to save us, that he has died for us. Um, we need that constant reminder because we, in our sinfulness, forget. Either consciously forget or subconsciously forget or just kind of passively forget, uh, just sort of putting it aside or completely forgetting. But we, we do need that constant um, reminder. I think a different word for it, but my brain is is still coming out of its <laughs> uh, illness fog. So <laughs> that'll have to be good for today. So there we have it. Back on track with a day, what is this? Day 33, I believe. Day 33. There you go. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, back at it. Thank you for bearing with me for our little uh, one-day break. Um, we're back on track, so um, hope you have a great day, and uh, we'll be, God willing, back at it tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.